Hello, and welcome to the behind the scenes video for Phoenix Rising, in parentheses, mi vida. I believe it was a Saturday night. I FaceTimed with Mark, Sean, and Sherry, our dear friends, Sean and Sherry, uh, and I got to remotely have dinner with them. They even put me in my spot at their table that I always sit at, and so I could feel like I was there. And you know, we FaceTimed for three or four hours until about one in the morning. And after we hung up, I got a text from Mark saying, we should write a lullaby for them and for baby Phoenix. And I was simultaneously both like, oh, of course, no brainer, duh, you're, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what we should do. And so excited about it. And also terrified uh, because I often feel a sense of nervousness and uh, terror when I start a new project because I worry, I hope that it will be good enough. And especially when it's an original, um, it seems like a mountain uh, to climb. So I sat down at the piano and I thought, where do I possibly begin? I know it's a lullaby, but where do I start? So I got to thinking, one of Sean's favorite songs is a song called All Related by Nessie Gomez. She's a fantastic artist if you haven't heard of her. I'm a big, big fan. So I started playing it and kind of plucking out, figuring out the chords of that song. And once I had them, and I just did it by ear, so I don't know if I fully got it right, but once I had what I thought were the chords, I started playing around. I brought them up a few octaves and I was playing with the melody. And then all of a sudden, the chord progressions and most of the lyrics that ended up being the final lyrics started flowing through me for the verse, for the pre-chorus, and the chorus. And it was such a wild feeling to feel like a conduit that, that it was flowing through me. Like, this isn't something I'm writing, it's just something that's coming into my fingertips and into my voice and I don't know where it's coming from but I'm feeling so grateful uh, and about an hour later I sent Mark a voice note and he said, yeah, that's it. Mark and I worked together uh, kind of fleshing out the lyrics and uh, kind of figuring out an ultimate, um, a, a specific format for how many choruses there were, how many times did we say Mi Vida? But musically, we weren't sure which direction to go um, for producing and for engineering or where were we, where were we going to record it, what instruments we were going to add, you know, we, we didn't we didn't have any idea where to go with it, but Mark has an incredibly accurate gut. Feel. When he has a gut feeling, it's always right. And uh, it kept saying to wait, wait it out, wait it out. And about a week before Phoenix was born, he ran into his friend Shaq, who is an engineer and mixer in LA. And we both happened to be in LA. And they got to talking and he agreed to do it. He had some time in his studio. Uh, that week and I've never worked with Shaq before and so it was sort of a leap of faith for me that I'm so glad I took because he's incredible and I'm, I'm so grateful. Like four days later uh, we were slated to go and have one day, one day to record the song and half a day to mix it. So we were on a total time crunch. We had one and a half days to get this song completely done. We get to the studio at about 10 a.m. and I start fiddling around on the piano because uh, the first thing we're going to do is record the piano part. And as you have heard, uh, the, the song is quite long. And so I was really nervous about my ability to play it correctly all the way through and in tempo. Uh, I was very nervous about that, but I knew we were on a time crunch. By about 12.30, we had, I had completed um, enough takes of the piano track that we felt, we felt good moving forward. So the next thing on the agenda was to record a vocal. At about 12.30, we get a call from Sean saying, the baby is coming. 
and he's coming and he's coming fast. So Mark leaves right away to go to Sean and Sherry's and I lay down the fastest scratch track that I could possibly lay down because we needed to have some sort of guide track. Uh, Kiara, Kiara Perico, who you all know well, she was coming in after me. And so she needed something to play to. So I recorded that as quickly as I could and then jetted over to Sean and Sherry's where we helped to deliver Phoenix into the world. That experience was unbelievably powerful. I am so honored that I got to be there to witness the birth of Phoenix and to be with Sean and Sherry through that experience. I'm so, so grateful for their friendship and for the miracle that is childbirth. During all of this commotion, Kiara got to the studio. I will never be able to describe how in awe I am of Kiara. She is such an incredible talent and a beautiful soul. And I texted her on March 23rd, one day before we were supposed to be in the studio, asking her if she happened to have time the following day to come in and play on this song. And she so graciously agreed to, and she came in. And she'd heard the song, you know, once the day before. And when I texted her at about 1 p.m. saying, Kiara, I'm so sorry, I'm not going to be there. Mark and I will not be there. She said, oh my gosh, so exciting. She didn't seem stressed at all. She took it all in stride and focused on the fact that, you know, this miracle baby was coming into the world. And then she stayed at the studio for, I think, three hours and all I said to her was, I trust you to give your beautiful gift to this baby. And she did. She stayed for so much longer than she needed to. She played viola. She played violin. She, she gave us the world to work with. And of course, when I got back to the studio and heard what she did, I cried. At about 5.30, uh, Mark and our friend Brad and I leave to go back to the studio. Now, we say we're going to run some errands and you know give Sean and Sherry some time with their newborn, but really we had a song to finish and Brad was there for the birth and also happens to be a wonderful guitar player. Brad Greenberg is one of the kindest humans I have had the pleasure of meeting and so generous. And uh, he actually owns a peanut butter and jelly restaurant where they make everything from scratch. Uh, it's called PBJLA and it's in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, that's a plug for his business if you're ever in LA. But uh, he also happens to be, yes, a wonderful guitar player. So. It was such a joy to get to watch him create a guitar part for this song. Uh, and he means so much to Sean and Sherry, so that was also just such a beautiful element. And he also played the waida, which is a ceremonial instrument. It's that sort of fan sound that you hear throughout the song. That's all Brad. After Brad recorded, we had one hour to record the lead vocal. Uh, and this song, like many of the other songs that I've done, is a bit tricky because it's whisper singing. Mark and I got to the studio, I want to say about 9.30 in the morning, and uh, the first thing that we did was lay down some background vocals, so here's a little snippet of that.
Okay, I'll, 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 do that. I'll, I'll give you a little. Mi vida, 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 mi vida. After that, I was under the impression that we were just going to mix the song. But Mark happens to be the king of surprises. So here are just a few of the things that Mark did for this song. He's just such a genius. Uh, as you already know, he helped to write this, the lyrics that I sing during the song. And what I did not know he was also doing was writing the beautiful spoken portion of the song during the instrumental break. Now he wrote that and had his friend Paula Acevedo help translate that section of the song. Then he sent those beautiful words to Taita Edwin, who is a healer and lives in Colombia, who is very, very close with Sean and Sherry and means a lot to us as well. He sent him those words and had him speak them and send them back all the way from Colombia. This is my reaction when I heard that for the first time. Nunca olvides que tu juego contiene tanta creación como destrucción. Así que úsalo siempre de manera responsable y para el bien común. Y cuando la destrucción sea inevitable, recuerda que el sufrimiento que en su paso puede ser rociado the flute and the jaw harp that are featured at the beginning of the song in the intro, Mark brought in Ernest Smith and Jenny Glorica, who are also dear friends of Sean and Cherry. They live in Puerto Rico and sent in those all the way from home and so they could be a part of it. That harmonica at the end? That is Sean. Mark secretly recorded Sean playing the harmonica. We went over for dinner two nights before Baby Phoenix was born and uh, Sean started playing the harmonica for Phoenix while he was still in Sherry's belly. So that is Sean, the father, playing for his unborn son. Those bells that you hear, that's Mark playing those bells over Sherry's belly that same night. Final verse, Mark had this beautiful vision where it felt like we were opening up uh, after this instrumental break into a beautiful sunset. So it was his idea to sample uh, some birds and put them in there and I think it makes a huge difference. And these are the things that come from Mark's brilliant genius brain and I feel like the luckiest person in the world that he lends me his talents, his energy, um, his vibrant creative thoughts. Uh, I, I'm just I'm just the luckiest. And then we had a couple of hours to mix the track and it was pretty much done. So on Friday night, the day after the, the Phoenix was born, we played the song for them for the first time, and uh, it was a really, really special experience.
many people to thank. Thank you, Mark, for all that you do. Thank you, Shaq Busani, for taking on this project and for doing such a beautiful job. I'm, I'm so grateful. Thank you, Kiara Perigo, for your beautiful contribution to this song. You truly gave such an incredible gift to Phoenix and to us. Thank you for doing it all on your own, just you and Shaq. <laughs> we are so lucky. Thank you to Brad Greenberg for lending us your talents with the guitar and the wida and for being such a beautiful, calming presence. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Taita Edwin, for speaking the beautiful words that Mark wrote all the way from Colombia. Thank you, Chrissy and Christina Fitt for helping me translate lyrics and to Paula Acevedo for helping Mark translate. Thank you, Ernest Smith and Genia Glorka for playing the flute and the jaw harp all the way from Puerto Rico. Thank you, Sean and Sherry and beautiful baby Phoenix for inspiring us, for the love that you give us, the love you give to the world, uh, for your friendship. We are forever grateful. And now I get to thank you. Thank you, patrons, so much, so, so much for your ongoing support. I don't know what I would do without you. Uh, I feel like the luckiest human being in the whole world to have your support and to have the encouragement to keep making music. Uh, you make songs like this possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to my executive patrons, Kenneth Bethune, Michael Starsenick, Cynthia Dungoski, Todd Torkelson, Amy Wolf, and Andy Gillespie. I hope you enjoyed this song. Uh, you enjoyed this video of how this song came into existence. Again, forever grateful for you all and sending you so much love. Shaq, look what you're doing back here. <laughs> Shut up. Look what you're, do look what you're doing. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> She's balling. <laughs>